your life? My life now? Okay, I'm just waiting for my tea to come in too. I'll just see if I can get this on the phone here. Um, so let's see. Uh, I can't see me. Hey ladies, apparently I'm live, but I can't see myself in here. Oh, there I am. There I am. I'm live now. Let me just check. The sound's working okay. Video has no sound. Can you test? Can you see if it's got any sound there? Ladies, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Just give me a comment below if you can hear me okay. It's just, no, it's not making any sound here. Video has no sound. On your camera, on your phone, it doesn't click the... Huh? Click the thing and push the volume up. Oh. Video has no sound. Oh, great. Okay, it's working. <laughs> Technical things are not my strong suit. Okay. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Julia. Trent's just shaking his head. He's like, oh my God, all this time. And she's uh, not very good with the, all the technical details. Oh, well, my mind doesn't work that way. Hi, Victoria, how are you? Say hi, ladies, when you're on so uh, I can see that you're there. It's always a bit odd, even after doing this all year, doing lives and talking to this camera apparatus that I have here, it still feels really odd sometimes doing a Facebook Live. So <clears throat> I'm always so appreciative of your guys' energy and, and uh, ensuring that I know that I'm not talking to myself because it is an odd thing. This whole Facebook Live thing is an odd thing, isn't it? Uh, let's see who else we've got here. Ladies, say hi when you jump on, please, so we can see you. I'm just going to move one little light for a second, excuse me. Just here. I had Indy in here before we got her this new scooter for uh, an early Christmas present. And it's got flashing lights on it and she's just learning how to steer it. So I had the lights and the camera set up and you know, the whiteboard, everything ready to go. And she came careering and look, mummy, look me, look me. And we crash into everything, which was quite hilarious. It was about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so a typical weekend antics. I hope you ladies have had a great start to the weekend. Julia, it'll be morning for you over there in Switzerland. I uh, hope you've got a beautiful weekend plan with more hiking, etc. And you ladies down under, I hear it's beautiful back there at the moment. Who have we got? Hi, Carol. And welcome to Inner Circle. Lovely to see you. Hi, Abigail. Welcome to Inner Circle. Lovely to see you too. Hey, Isabel. How are you? How's everything over in Europe? Uh, hope you're well. So, ladies, we will... Got to love it. Yeah, absolutely. Little people. Oh, my goodness. So, we'll just give it a couple more minutes and wait for a few more of the ladies to hop on before we start and get right into... Um, for the next 50 minutes talking about self-sabotage. What a mind-boggling topic, huh? I promise we've got our light and fluffy module after this one, but <clears throat> I really wanted to crack this this year because I think it's all good and well to set goals and to set plans, you know, New Year's resolutions. But the main thing that stops and hinders us from reaching those, as I've said before, and the tutorial is our self-sabotage behaviours. So I wanted to get those out of the way first so we could then focus on actually getting to our goals with ease next year. So it might be a bit of a curly one for the end of the year, but you'll notice with the challenge, um, I've done things and with just baby steps, just micro steps, because I don't want to inundate you guys. I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want you to feel that it's just too much information um, each day. And I thought if I can make it just a few minutes a day, uh, that's a bite-sized chunk that everyone can follow along with. And what we know from all the modules we've done before, especially when we've talked about neuroscience, is that you know 
to form a new habit and to be able to dissolve old ones, the most important thing we can do is showing up each day. So it's that consistent practice of the new that allows us to reprogram the old, you know, the old ways we worked, the old ways we behaved, the old ways we showed up, etc. So that's what I love about challenges. I've tried to find a different word for challenge because I find that word challenge sometimes can feel a bit like, oh, it's going to be too hard. But I think it's the most descriptive word for what we're doing. And you know, we all like a bit of achievement and that's what you get with a challenge. And it's also really nice doing it with one another, isn't it? I've loved seeing you guys commit to it already. Thank you for doing that. I wanted to say a big well done at the start of this call because I've loved reading the threads, the openness, the vulnerability, the, you know, it's, it's really great to see. It's not always easy being able to talk about feelings and being able to sort of tap into how your mind works but you ladies have done that with such gusto right from day one so I'm really proud of you girls thank you for doing that and I think that's the beauty of having a really safe space with this community because you know everything is positive in here and everything is judgment free we don't judge one another we cheer one another on we support one another and couldn't you see yourself in a lot of the things that had been written as well? Like, I know a lot of you were saying, oh yeah, gosh, that's the same as me. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That's the beauty of sharing because often I think when we have these sort of things that we like to keep hidden, um, we think that there's something to be shameful about or we kind of put bad connotations with them. And really, we're normal. They're just the same as everyone else. And so by shining the light on them, we're showing them to be something which is normal. It's normal and it's something which is really common amongst other people. Oh, here comes my tea. Thank you, Chef. Could I just have it here, please? Yeah, yeah, come say hi to the ladies. Ladies, you'll know Chef Watana. He's just bought me some tea, which is great. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. That's amazing. Oh, I've got two cups. Who's the other one for? The ladies. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's great. We're um, testing out new recipes for a retreat at the moment. So it's been wonderful having um, the chef, you know, here um, a lot of the time so we can try out different recipes. And it's a hard job, but someone's got a taste test for you ladies. So that's what we're doing at the moment, coming up with new recipes and new festive food ideas as well uh, that we'll deliver over the holiday season. Excuse me while I have a tea. I've been so rushed off my feet today that I didn't have breakfast. Went into a Facebook Live earlier today with our uh, meditation and breath coach training. Did some recipe development, um, photos, and managed to have a quick lunch, and then I'm back on the couch. Lucky I love talking so much. <laughs> mm. So anyway, that's what I love about this challenge and this topic, because... For those that watch the self-sabotage workshop and the mini escape, I just, uh, there's so much information in there and the benefit of being able to extrapolate that stuff when you're doing quite, you know, it's heavy lifting. It is heavy lifting. Let's, let's get real. Um, that's the beauty of a challenge because each day by following along like you ladies are, it's just focusing on one little step. You don't even need to know what's coming ahead, like what's in store for you coming up. You don't even need to worry about that because we have a cunning plan, a master plan for you ladies. And we're just going to gently guide you there with thought-provoking questions each day and different tools that we share along the way. And my goal at the end of this month is that you ladies have taken your one goal, as I said in the post uh, yesterday or today, uh, we only want you to work with one. And I know a lot of you like to multitask, you know, we're women, we like to be modern day superwoman and juggle many things. But what happens when we do that, when we're doing deep work, is that we can get overwhelmed really quickly. And when we get overwhelmed, what happens? We self-sabotage. And we sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater and think, blow, I'm just too busy for this. It's December, I'm too busy. You know, the little voices start coming up. So that's why I would much rather you take this month slow and you just do the baby steps here and you follow along with just one goal. So I guess the most important question to start thinking about is 
what is that one goal? And it's great to see a lot of the identification work coming up already. Just make sure it's your most important goal, the one that you really want to conquer. So if you sort of pause, you know, here and now, and you fast track through to January the 1st, and you look back on this crazy, busy, beautiful, challenging, uh, thought-provoking year, and you think about how happy you are that during 2020 you chose to kick self-sabotage behavior for your biggest goal that you weren't able to experience, then what would that goal have been? Because sometimes it's not the first thing we think of. We have to sit with a question like that for a while and ponder it because it can be hiding behind something obvious and then something behind that too. So yeah, the way I always like to do things where I'm sort of delving into work like this is just sitting with it for a while and thinking, well, what is that thing that keeps coming up for me? The thing that I just really, really want to crack, but I don't seem able to. And then going with that. And I'm going to talk later on in the session today about one of my self-sabotage behaviours that I'm actively working on. Because I think that always helps as well um, in terms of understanding other people's and, and hearing about those and strategies that work too. So ladies, before we jump into um, a bit more detail, do you have any questions? How have you found things so far? Let me know in the comments below. Hi Anne-Marie, how are you? How's Bay of Plenty? Now goodness, you live right near, I should have introduced you ladies earlier, did you know that you and Catherine live right near one another? So Anne-Marie, Anne you're in, are you in, you're not in Papamoa, you're in Tauranga, I know you've moved recently, are you at Otomoto? And Catherine, you are around Otomoto, aren't you? You are very, very close to each other so you should definitely say hi. Hi Suzette, how are you? Nice to see you on the call as well. So ladies, um, this week we brought out our first tool which was the belief and goal clash. So that was, do you remember that little triangle in the tutorial video and in the handouts? Um, at the bottom of the triangle was where our belief sit. So I call it identity, identity work. <clears throat> and whatever we believe to be true, whatever we believe we are, so our identity, you know, it could be I'm an amazing mom or I am a busy teacher or I am a um, diligent student, you know, whatever that belief is that we carry about ourselves or about something, that will drive what we do. So, for example, if it was, I am fit, active, and healthy person, then my habits might be, well, I get up early and I go for a run, or I make great food choices every day and nourish my body. And then that leads to our goal. So, for example, if it was about running a marathon, that would mean that I have alignment between my belief and goal if I believe I'm a fit and active person and therefore my habits would be, so I train daily to um, get ready for my marathon and therefore I achieve it. So there's no clash and when there's no clash, there's ease to reach your goal. The problem is when there's not alignment. So the way the brain works, the way neuroscience works as well is when there's not alignment, it's going to be very difficult for you to reach your goal. You're going to have to dig into your willpower and really try and, you know, dig in deep to get there. And there's going to come a time when you don't want to do that anymore because your belief isn't, you know, isn't holding you there. So there you are trying to push a rock up a hill and you're just not getting there. You're taking a really, really hard, long path. So the only way around that is to change your belief about something. And that's the whole point of what we're doing. We're doing belief busting, if you think of it um, in another context this month. And we're looking at, you know, some of the things might really surprise you in terms of um, what you uncover. And that's why I say, you know, make sure, especially the new ladies in a circle, make sure that you go back and look at that manifesto earlier last week that we wrote in the self-sabotage month because it's really important to keep reminding yourself, this is just all interesting. Anything you uncover, oh, that's interesting, rather than berating yourself. I can't believe that I didn't do that, or I can't believe I held myself back from that. 
hey, we've all done it. Hey, we're, we're beautiful works in progress. I always remind myself of this when something doesn't go according to plan or when I realize I've made a big mistake. I just say, hey, I'm a beautiful work in progress. And, you know, like you would to a child, we have to treat ourselves with love around any self-development work we're doing. Otherwise, we just wouldn't be successful with it because we don't like to do things that are painful. And we've got to be very careful of this, very careful of what we tell ourselves. And when we're going through a period of change and uncovering things that might be a bit uncomfortable, we have to make sure that we do it with kid gloves on and that we're really gentle and that we're really kind because that is the pathway to our success. If we don't do that, I guarantee, just like when you're at school and you had, I remember a really strict teacher I had called Mr Ormsby and I was in his maths class and he always used to tell me off for talking. And the way that he would, it was in an all-girls school actually, he was the only male there, poor him. And the only way he would be able to get everyone on task was to be extremely strict and very militant in his approach, which didn't work very well with teenage girls. And when people sort of drive fear into you, I mean, what's going to happen? We know from a scientific point of view, it's, it shuts down the prefrontal cortex where we make all our decisions from a place of wisdom and we think strategically. So when we, you know, are strict to ourself and judgmental to ourself, we're certainly going to sabotage our efforts because it doesn't feel good and we don't want to lean into pain. So we're going to go the other way. So just remember, if you feel like you're judging yourself during this month, or you feel that sort of critical voice rise up because we all have the inner coach and the inner critic, just remember it's preventing you from growth and say, hey, I see what you're doing. I understand that voice and this isn't healthy for me right now. I'm going to choose an alternative perspective. And I, I literally do that. That's what um, I say to myself when my inner critic pipes its head up because it all happens to all of us. And it just helps to consciously, again, change the looping in your brain, change the pattern. Because the more you focus on something, the greater it will become. And also the more you resist something, the you know, stronger it will become. So just by acknowledging it, it's just a gentle way of moving it on. Move on, buddy. Out of here. There's no place for you right now. I'm, I'm doing my deep work and I don't need you chipping in. <laughs> so I hope that helps. I just wanted to start with mindset because everything begins and ends with the mind and that will often fuel our success or hinder it. Does that make sense, ladies? Have you found that um, you've had that little voice or had some sort of internal resistance to starting off this month? I'd love to hear and comment below because I'm sure there's some ladies that have and it would probably be good for them to hear that they're not alone in that. Oh, and Marie, you are central tarong in the Otomotai. Oh, great. Well, it'll be interesting when Catherine jumps on to see if she's if she's near there. But yeah, ladies, let me know um, what's come up for you. I'd love to hear what are some things that you've found as you've started reaching for those, you know, beliefs. How did you go with identifying your belief, the one that clashed with your goal? So was it easy? What did you do in terms of discovering that? Pop it down in the questions below. See, you're all very quiet today. <laughs> and that's fine too, don't worry. I won't put you on the spot. I know this is a tricky, tricky topic. But I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you, uh, what came up for you and how you went in terms of identifying your belief that clashed with your goal. Because we all have them, don't we? We have a goal that we set ourselves and it pops up on our list every year. And we're like, God. There it goes again. There's that goal, that goal that remains so elusive again, time and time again. Why am I not achieving it? So it's great if you can identify that and just look back at, you know, what's been on your list for the longest. No. Nope. No comments. Okay. All right, ladies. Well, one of the things in terms of, you know, when we are, and I've mentioned it before, but one of the reasons that we um, keep self-sabotaging ourselves with a specific goal is because we're getting some need that is satisfied at some level. 
So it's that short-term positive payoff that I spoke about before that is easier and that is more rewarding in the here and now. You know, we get that instant fix um, that we perceive to be more important or more rewarding than our long-term goal. And what we're going to do through the challenge as we go on, so you'll see as the daily challenges crop up, is really look at exposing and understanding what is that short-term payoff. Because again, when we shine the torch on it, shine the light on it, then we can understand what that trade-off really is and rationalise whether it's worth it or not. So I'll use an example of, you know, uh, I want to save for a holiday, but I spend all my money, my holiday savings on online shopping. So what is that need satisfying? Well, there's that short-term dopamine hit, you know, it's those chemicals that are flooded through the body, the dopamine chemicals that you get from online shopping. So what's something that you could replace that with? Well, there's quite a few other things that give you dopamine. Um, exercise would be a great one. So maybe instead of, you know, when you are craving, you know, using, um, doing something that's going to contravene that goal of saving up for your holiday fund, you could go and do some exercise, put on one of Lucy's classes in class pass, or go to the gym, or do one of Frankie's yoga classes, or get out in nature, something that activates that dopamine. It's the same sort of hit. Or it could be, I am, you know, I, by the end of the, the week, the working week, I'm feeling so stressed, and I get home, and I've been stuck in all this Friday traffic, and I was late again because... I really wanted to get that project done before the weekend so I could clear it off my to-do list. So by the time I got home, I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten properly. And so I, um, instead of going out, you know, and uh, going to my meditation class, which I love to do in candlelit yin class, I decided to grab a bottle of wine, get some takeaway, like fried fish and chips, oily fish and chips, and watch Netflix until really late because I just wanted to get out of that busy work mode and just recover from that and I just felt stressed and angsty and so it's like going okay well I guess the positive payoff there was not having to deal with the stress so you were distracting yourself from the stress whatever the behavior could be it could have been scrolling through social media it could have been picking a fight with your partner. Whatever it is, it's actually not dealing with something. It's avoiding feeling into whatever it is that, that was happening that day, which was stress at work and allowing it to actually overtake the good things in your life. So that was the self-sabotaging behavior. So what we're going to go on to, to look at... Sorry, that's my dog, Roxy, wanting to get out. Roxy! Roxy, come here! So what we're going to look at is actually understanding what the belief is behind that that's actually driving that behavior. Does that make sense, ladies? I'm just going to let Roxy out because she's going to bark otherwise through this. So excuse me for a second. Roxy, what are you doing? What are you doing? Here you go. Out you go. Hi, Roxy. Are you coming in? Oh, my gosh, you're coming in now. You two are hilarious. She's decided to stay in because our other dog, Ricey's come in too. Hopefully they'll be well behaved. So yeah, does that make sense, ladies? Let's have a look. We've got some comments. Yay! Um, Abigail, my goal is to be in a happy, healthy relationship. The limiting belief is that I won't find one. Absolutely. And that's great. That's great to actually discover and easily be able to understand what it is that's holding you back from doing that because then that middle piece of the triangle which is all around the habits or the actions you're taking to reach your goal will be really difficult because at the end of the day there's no alignment there so by being able to change that uh, and that belief will help you create that alignment so then it's easy for you to find a man in your life um, can I ask and if you're happy to share or not, um, it's completely up to you. But what is some of the behavior that you're noticing 
um, that, you know, the, the, the times when you might fall off the wagon? Are you taking steps in terms of creating space for that relationship? That's a real big one amongst our community and a, amongst guests at Escape Haven. And was certainly my case as well was actually I hadn't created in my 30s space to meet someone. And it wasn't until I went to my coach, I've had the same coach since I started Escape Haven, and she had this really pivotal discussion with me when I came back one summer holidays. I would always go back to New Zealand in summer. And she draws up this really nice diagram, which is basically like, you know, like this plate, and puts little slices in it, and uh, like the wheel of life, like the wheel of life. Mm. And would say, for someone that's so achievement focused, I just wanted to reflect something back to you. And I was like, okay, I was not expecting this part. And she said, well, every summer, if we take every summer as a yard, you know, yardstick of comparison of the one, ne- you know, the one before, kind of like a line in the sand of time, being someone that's so achievement focused, you know, everything's on track for you, everything's going great. But I don't notice that you're making any progress on the relationship front. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? And it got me thinking and I was like, but no, I always date when I come back. And she said, yeah, you always date, you know, people that you go off wakeboarding with or surfing with, but no one that you're actually ever serious about. And I was like, gosh, you're actually right. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm just too busy. And I've got, you know, all these other things that I've got going on. And she said, well, A, what's driving that behavior of you choosing, you know, these fun, great guys, but not ones that are sort of, you know, the ones that you want to settle down with. And also, um, why aren't you creating space for a relationship if you really want that? And that was a huge turning point for me. Sometimes that's all it takes to actually have a look at something, you know, in our busyness of life. And that's what I love about this self-sabotage, you know, the self-sabotage workshop as well, because when do we really look in and it's something like this that is such a determinant of having a successful life or not? And uh, that changed everything for me. Um, a, because one of my core values is achievement. And I thought, gosh, I'm not achieving. And two, I thought, why am I choosing guys that I know that it's not going to be anything serious with and so I decided to do something about it and three weeks three weeks later I met the love of my life that I'm married to now Trent I was 41 at the time Abigail so um just letting you know that um you know it 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 absolutely happens when we have an intention around it and when we work on those limiting beliefs and my limiting belief by the way and I'd love to dig into yours more because it would be really interesting to say, well, why don't you think you'll, you'll find one? And for me, I thought the same thing. And I realized why I thought that was because I embodied a previous heartbreak that I had at 31. At 31, I had my heart um, broken for the first time when someone I thought I was going to marry, not that we were engaged, but left me all of a sudden. Um, and just before I actually came away and had this idea about Escape Haven um, when I was 31. And so what happens when we have a traumatic event like that is we can embody that event. And as Joe Dispenza says it, if any of you guys read his stories about epigenetics, is we store that emotion of heartbreak or whatever that trauma is in our tissues at a cellular level. And we embody that. So therefore, that's the way that we feel and respond and think about situations. And so it creates a fear in us of something. So for me, it was a fear of getting into a relationship with someone I genuinely really cared about and loved again. And so through my 30s, I avoided that. And it wasn't until that conversation with Carolyn that I realized, okay, enough time now. I'm 41 and... uh, I need to really think about this because, yeah, I, uh, I would love to meet someone. I'd love to meet the love of my life. And so I was very specific after I did that about how I wanted him to show up and the list of criteria I had. And it was very different than the normal list you have in your 20s or 30s. It was about the characters, the character that he would embody. And guess who showed up? Someone that was exactly like I asked for. 
So it's, you know, by actually really being able to dig into why you have that belief and then, you know, imagining how incredible it will be once you've achieved that goal and why there is every reason in the world, I call it really strengthening your why, and we go on to do that in the challenge, by the way. It's a few steps away. But then by really imagining what that future would be like once I reach that goal of meeting the love of my life, I built up so much emotion around that, so much evidence and proof of why it would be an extremely good thing for me, that my fears, these little, little fears just kind of faded away because they were nothing in comparison to this, to this really strong, megawatt, amazing, incredible why. I was like, wow, and we could travel the world and have a family and go and live in exotic places, maybe even on a tropical island, <laughs> and you know, bring up our girls in the ocean and all of these things that I imagined. And, you know, and then you look at this belief and I, I looked at it and I was like, well, that's actually just a figment of my thoughts. That's actually just an opinion. It's not a fact. And when we go through belief busting in this challenge, you know, I'll get you to look at these beliefs. Why do you believe this to be true? Is it true? Have you got someone else to validate if that's actually true? Or has that been something that somewhere along the way in our journey of life, you know, bad things happen. Of course, we get blindsided. We have trauma. We have heartbreak. We have loss. We have failure. You know, we are very resilient beings because we've had to be and we've had to evolve. But the most important thing is to, to work on that resilience by being able to look at events when they happen and saying and standing apart from them dusting ourselves off, as Brene Brown talks about in the arena, you know, getting up, getting up from the floor after we've been knocked down, getting rid of the dust, wiping the sweat off our brow and saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm made of more than this. I'm not that. I'm not that event that happened to me. Um, that was just something that happened to me and I'll take the learnings from it, but I won't be that and I won't let my past define my future because my future is full of promise and hope and new beginnings. And Joe Dispenza, who I just love, um, I watch his stuff every morning. Those that know me well know that I do the 5am club. Every day I do it. And, um, you know, you get up at 5am and you do your exercise on the big screen TV. I either have Lucy up there or I have Les Mills Body Jam up there or I have, um, there's a really great Zumba um, it's called Sulu Zumba. So there's like some like big beefy um, Colombian guy that does like the salsa with me or I'll do that often with Trent if he's not out surfing. And then I do um, 20 minutes of um, my own breath work or meditation or one of Frankie's meditation. And then 20 minutes is for reflection or it's for journaling or it's for success visualization how will you know like so I'll ask myself questions while I'm in a meditation how will success look like for me today will it be you know the kids laughing and being really happy or will it be you know like um uh courses being sold and seeing that come through or will it be great feedback from a customer whatever those sort of success metrics are so I'll think about those things or the other thing you can do for those last 20 minutes is watch something inspirational so again we've got a big screen tv um, I've already had it going because of the exercise and then the meditation so then I'll watch Joe Dispenza on YouTube and uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic because it just helps to grow your mind. But he talks about, which is so true, if you want to change your personal reality, so if you want to change your life, you want to make changes in your life, you have to change parts of your personality. You have to change how you think about things. Because how you think about things, if you think, if you think the same way about things, you're going to have the same output every single day. Your life is going to be linear. It's not even going to be linear because we've always got stuff that's coming in. We've always got stress. We've always got external forces happening to us. Here, look at the global environment at the moment. So we have to do better than we did yesterday. Otherwise, we feel worse than we did yesterday. You know, I love the Japanese concept of Kaizen, continuous improvement. How do we make 
tomorrow better than today? What are the learnings from today or yesterday that I can apply to today? And it's the same thing when we're going through growth or when we're going through change around saying, okay, well, if I want something new, I have to show up as someone new. And that's what we're doing this month. We're continuing peeling back the layers. We're unlearning. We're looking at parts of ourselves that we say goodbye to. And I know that that probably sounds uncomfortable, but we have to dissolve those things that are holding us back. And that's what these limiting beliefs are. You know, I'd love to do a fire ceremony. I was thinking about it earlier because I love fire ceremonies. But just around, you know, when we actually are dissolving these beliefs, going, okay, well, we set them free. We set them goodbye. Because if we have the same beliefs, we will have the same outcome. And I go back to that story of how I met Trent. If I carried on the way I carried on, not making time and choosing men that I knew would never leave me, but I would leave them, then I would never have this beautiful family that I have and I would never have this deep contentment that I have from meeting the love of my life. You know, I had a belief, oh gosh, in my 40s, maybe all the good ones are taken. Heck no, absolute rubbish. But it was only once I started doing that belief work that I started uncovering more beliefs. So that's why I'm saying, Abigail, it'd be so interesting when you sit with that to uncover what are some beliefs under that belief. Because when you have those, you can start looking at them, start laughing at them at some point and going, no more. No, those aren't actually true. I believe those because of ABC. I remember when I had just broken up with, um, you know, my heartbreak that I I spoke about um, back then. And it was when I had landed back in New Zealand and at the time, and I was 31. And there were these nationwide headlines that ripped around New Zealand at the time. And it said, a 31-year-old female has as much chance of meeting, oh, sorry, uh, Oh yeah, a 31-year-old female has as much chance of meeting a 31-year-old man as a 71-year-old female. Man shortage. And I was just like, oh my goodness, on the back of heartbreak, coming back to New Zealand after living abroad for so long and sailing around the Atlantic on a yacht, I was just like, this is just doomsday. So that's kind of what set it off, you know, right at the start of my 30s. So I think so really do we actually look at our beliefs and say where do they come from and you know where was that seed planted from was it planted from a parent was it planted from media was it planted from an ex was it planted from a well-meaning friend a caregiver a teacher whatever the case may be an event that happened when we can unravel that stuff we can then unlearn it we can say is this healthy is this taking me forward because I love that idea in order to create change, we have to change parts of ourselves. We have to throw off some of these bow lines that are anchoring us to this, like tethering us to this like dock in a marina when we should be out sailing on the, this expansive ocean towards these beautiful islands of our dreams. You will you'll know by now I, I love boat analogies, don't I? But I think that just paints a really nice picture of saying let's free ourselves from our marinas and get out into the ocean of our life. And that's what this month is all going to be about. So, long answer to that question. Let's see what other comments we've got here. Uh, Victoria, I'm finding the belief clash a bit confusing. Great, let me know what you find confusing about it and I'll talk to that. Did that help to... um, Did that help to explain it a little bit better, Victoria? Let me know if it did. And if not, where are the areas that are a bit confusing? Not being too accountable to myself or to anybody else. Deborah, um, so am I. Okay, starting this module really motivates me to finally stop the self-sabotage belief I have. Also, it was great that everyone shared and was so open to this. Wasn't it great, Isabel? Me too. And I'm really pleased that you've got that energy around it as you start off too, because that's wonderful. Um, Abigail, not creating the time or space. I enjoy my own time and happy to enjoy yoga, walking and being by myself after a busy day. I need to find a way to open up and let someone in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there you go. You've got a realization about doing that. But 
that's the habit part, right? So by changing your belief, then you'll naturally um, create space and time for that. Can you see how one is dependent on the other? So by starting again, thinking of that triangle, starting at the bottom as beliefs, if you get those right, I have a goal of a healthy, wanting a healthy, successful, you know, amazing relationship with the man of my dreams. I need to believe I can do that. I need to believe that he's there and I'm going to meet him. And so if you believe that, you know, when you change that belief around from I don't believe I'll find him to I know I'm going to find him and this incredible man is going to show up in this way, then you'll make space for him because you're motivated by your belief. But if your belief is I don't think I'll find him, then your mind's going to go, well, why bother putting in the effort? I'm not going to create space for it because I don't believe it's going to happen. So when you get your belief locked in and in alignment with your goal, there's no clash between your belief and your goal. It's in alignment. Like a jigsaw puzzle, it clicks in. And therefore, it's really easy for that behavior in between, which is the things you do to get that goal. So, okay, I'm going to create space. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to set up an online profile. I'm going to tell friends, introduce me. I'm going to have dinner parties. I'd have dinner parties. They were called Cold Star, where I invite single friends and we'd all invite someone that we didn't know that we thought would be really nice um, to get to know more, um, that f you know friends might know or that we might see at the gym or what have you. It's an old New Zealand tradition that we would do and, and that was a great way of, of meeting people. But you'll do those sorts of things if your belief is there. If your belief's not there, you might do them once or twice and then think, blow this, what's the point? I'm not going to meet the man anyway. Does that make sense? And does that, for Victoria and Deborah, does that kind of um, paint more of a picture of how that works with belief and goals needing to be in alignment and not clashing? Um, what did you do about it to change things? Did that make sense, Abigail? Hopefully that made sense. I think you wrote that a little while ago. Anne-Marie, how do you get it out of your tissues and cellular? Um, I would really recommend reading Joe Dispenza's books. I had them just here, just before. Oh, he's got all sorts. One's called Becoming Supernatural. He's got a number of books, but this is a great one. And he's got a lot of great YouTube um, videos as well, and Marie. But again, it's just tapping into understanding where you have been programmed. So where you have specific beliefs about something that are holding you back and that are limiting you and then busting those going through a series of you know exercises where you actually look and evaluate it and observe it as you're standing apart from it because we so rarely do that our beliefs are so in us you know that they're, they're part of us that we we always believe them to be true unless we do something like this and we start actually evaluating them and go well, actually, is that true? And where did it come from? And so you start that line of inquiry. We'll go through those exercises later in the month for our 21-day challenge. So keep following along with it because you will um, definitely reframe those things that aren't you know, healthy for you and that are holding you back. Um, so interesting. I'm afraid to get into a relationship as they haven't been the best relationships and I don't feel like I am being someone I like being. Okay, interesting. Um, and again, great to really unpick that, isn't it? To really, you know, look at that and say, okay, so based on what's happened to you in the past, you feel that that's then therefore going to dictate your future. So is that fact or is that fiction? You see, when you start kind of like looking at those questions and going, okay, I'm just making some really big assumption here that I'm always going to show up the same way every single relationship and always the same dynamic in a relationship is going to keep repeating it itself. Well, that's not true. And you've got a big role to play in that in terms of who you choose going forward, you know, and the learnings that you take from previous partners. As I said, I could have still kept on, you know, choosing the same guys that I knew I never wanted to marry and settle down with. But I made a conscious choice to choose someone different and to have a different relationship. And it was an entirely different experience. And it, you know, it was incredible. And that choice is available for you as well. When you just start looking 
at these beliefs you have and deciding which ones are healthy beliefs and which ones are unhealthy beliefs. And that's what we go into in the challenge because you ladies will have so many positive, healthy beliefs about different areas of your life where your belief and your goal is in complete alignment and there's no clash. And when that happens, those goals are really easy to um, meet. So for example, um, if I think of one, um, I get up uh, 4.40, 4.30 every morning. I go to bed at 8, but I get up at that time every morning and exercise. As I know it's good for me, it gives me energy and it makes me feel productive. So there's no clash. So do you see what I mean when there's, when there's a belief and goal clash and when there's a belief and goal alignment? Um, when there's a belief and goal alignment that even when you're tired or even when it might be rainy or even when there might be a million and one reasons not to do it, maybe you've stayed out late the night before, you still do it because you're motivated by a deep desire and a deep healthy belief that it's really good for you and that you get pleasure from doing it. There's such a big positive why behind it. You know how I spoke about that sparkling, glamorous, you know, bombastic why before that we're going to develop through the 21-day program. Well, that's what motivates you to do it. And that's why some goals are much easier than others because instinctively you know, you know at a cellular level that, it is, um, you know, it's programmed within you to go and do that because you know what the payoff's like and you know how positive it is. So that's when you find flow. And when you don't have flow, when there's a clash, you're just relying on willpower and that will only work for a certain amount of time. Let's look at some other questions here. Um, Deborah, I could never do the 5 a.m. club. That would mean I have only four to five hours sleep. Well, that depends when you're going to bed, my love. <laughs> so again, it depends what your goals are. So for some people, absolutely, they're night owls and they won't because um, they won't go to bed, you know, they won't go to bed early. But if you've got a goal around, um, you know, having a really energized day, then I would suggest going to bed early because the only way in which we can really recover and recovery is so incredibly important for us, no matter what we do, is by having at least eight hours sleep. There's a fallacy that we can get by on six to seven hours sleep. There is so much evidence and research that suggests we're constantly in a deficit that we need to make up if we have less than eight hours. And so going to bed, look, I mean, I know that uh, we go to bed freakily early at eight o'clock, but, you know, say even going to bed at nine o'clock, getting your eight hours is absolutely critical. And the reason the 5 a.m. club is great is because it's, they call it the victory hour. It's that time in the morning um, when, um, you know, you have that hour to yourself, no matter what, you're not going to get an email, you're not going to get you know, kids coming in and, and disturbing you. The world hasn't woken up yet. So all you have is this beautiful silence and nature enveloping you. And you have the ability to have this exquisite hour all to yourself. And if you chunk it up into those three um, containers of time and you're very precise around what you do there, it's... A, a, I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible the progress you can make in all the different areas of your life. The reason they do the fitness, first of all, is because it activates, it gets you in that sympathetic nervous system you're on. You are, you know, you're wired, you're ready, you're ready for action and you're really alert and alive first thing in the morning. All your lymph system's going, you've got your heart rate up, you're sweating and, uh, and breathing really well. And then it's really easy from there to then drop into, when you're in your sympathetic nervous system, to then drop into your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest, and really drop deep into meditational breath work. So it's just a beautiful combination between the two. And there's a lot of research and science behind that too. And then the great thing about doing the reflection at the other end is if we're not manifesting our dreams, if we're not thinking forward to our future, if we're not feeding our mind, guess where we're living? In the past and we're letting everything in the past that we're ruminating about that we're carrying around like a load of rocks weigh us down and hold us back 
from reaching our destiny and what we're actually primed to do with our life because so many of us aren't living our potential, aren't reaching our potential and we're, t- we're feeling depressed, we're feeling anxious, you know, and often it's based on stuff that's never happened and never will happen. But replaying things from the past and going through things that we can't change anyway and when we're doing that our body and our mind can't tell the difference between an actual event um, and a fictitious one so you imagine you know like two scenarios one where you aren't doing the primary work and you aren't working on yourself and you're just waking up and you know all these things start to pepper your mind and you're thinking about the past and you're ruminating about you know things that might or might not happen today and you know why did that happen to me and oh I'm feeling like this or you are actually actively thinking about the future and you're thinking about how fantastic it's going to feel when you're reaching your goal and you're developing your why behind these goals that you have and really imagining what that's going to look like, well then your brain believes that that's actually happened ahead of the time. So instead of just waiting for something to happen and feeling great about it, you know, Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza, you know, it's epigenetics. It's about priming your mind to believe that it's already happened. So then that gets programmed the body at a cellular level instead of all of the hurt and the upset and the trauma of the past you start to change the way in which you, you know, you think and feel about things at a, at a body level. They say our um, biology is our biography. So, you know, body workers at retreat can tell what's happened to a person. You know, Anne-Marie, I know you love Malcolm, don't you? One of our incredible body workers here. And he can tell just through looking at someone's body and doing body work exactly what kind of experiences they have had. So we have to reprogram that, and that's what I love about stuff. Like the 5am club, like self-development, like journaling, because it gives us that ability to actually start thinking forward and start manifesting forward and thinking about our hopes and our dreams. And when we're doing that, when we're playing in that space, guess what space we're not playing in? Worry, regret, guilt, shame, none of that. That doesn't occupy our thoughts. That doesn't occupy our minds because as soon as we do that, we're pulled, pulled off this beautiful path all the way back down here. And when we're back down here, none of the good stuff happens. We're held back. We all have different realities and um, you know pivots in our path that are available to us where you know, we can go and we can take an event that's not gone well for us, like our environment this year, and we can say, right, I'm going to do something about it. And we can pivot off into the most beautiful trajectory. And, uh, and that's what I love about Inner Circle, because that's what you ladies have signed up to do. So I hope that makes sense. That's a very long-winded answer to the 5am club, <laughs> but something I'm really passionate about. Um... It's really great. Oh, I like how you guys are helping out one another as well. Julia said, is there a possibility of going to bed earlier? Absolutely. Don't say never. Absolutely. It's really great to start your day like this. You should give it a try. Yeah, Isabel, you do it too. I'm so proud of you. So does Lucy. Lucy does it as well. Mm. You should give it a try with this one hour for yourself. It can also be at 6 a.m. Absolutely. Can you go to bed earlier? Because we learn sleep is important. Definitely. I've obviously been doing the last, doing the 5am club for the last months without knowing that it existed. Oh, great, Julia. That's awesome. Uh, I just realized that getting up early and doing a meditation. Thanks, Frankie. Yeah, her morning meditations are amazing, aren't they? Go running and listening to inspirational podcasts helps me so much, but I also realized that I need enough sleep. So my routine is to go to bed at 9.30, sometimes 9.00. This is, of course, easier during COVID, not meeting many people in the evening and during winter when it gets dark early. Awesome. That's great. Great, Julia. That's awesome. Uh, And it would be getting winter in Switzerland now, wouldn't it? Hey, Frankie. Frankie's watching. How are you? I'm thinking I'm getting my goal muddled up with my belief. Okay, yeah. Victoria, do you want to run it past me? Or um, you can let me know later if you like. Yes, thanks, said Deborah. Great, I'm glad that works. 
Yes, makes perfect sense. That's great, Abigail. I'm glad it did. It's interesting to see, Reed, how hard we ladies can be on ourselves. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We, uh, our inner critic can be much a more powerful voice than our inner coach if we allow it to be. The most important thing is just to start tuning into it and then making sure we don't embody it. But just being curious, oh, that's interesting, it's coming up again. That's what I say, I use that language. Oh, I'm curious, that voice is coming up again. It's interesting, what do I need right now? What do I need in this moment? Uh, it was a great answer, Janine. Oh, good, oh, thank you, Deborah. I'm glad it was. Hey, Anna, how are you? I'm so pleased you could pop on. I know it's a busy weekend for you in Italy, isn't it? Um, Abigail, so if I believe I've already met my future partner and I am happy and loving in this relationship, then it will happen because what I think and believe changes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it can seem so woo-woo and funny sometimes doing that until you start regularly doing it and see what transpires and what shows up. When I wanted to start a skate haven, I manifested it. I manifested the details. So I created this crazy, big, powerful, sparkly, like amazing why around, you know, women's retreats. And I would do detail and I would do it via journaling. So journaling was my way because I love writing. And I would be like, oh, I can imagine these white, so you can sort of see white billowing curtains here, white billowing curtains blowing in and out in the sea breeze. And I, I can imagine this long like wooden table with candles and flowers all down it and women all sitting around a table talking underneath the stars about life and love and the world and travel and things that really mattered and just losing track of time, being in this moment with like-minded people from all around the world. And all of these details I manifested and I remember when I had that realization when I was running one of my retreats sitting out under the stars having dinner flower laden table laughing with women talking about all these great um, stories that I realized oh my gosh this is my manifestation and things like vision boards um, you, a number of you girls have done uh, Lucy's and my vision board workshops before can really help with that and in fact in our challenge we do that around identity because again, when we're thinking about these goals, and Abigail, so I'll use you as an example if that's okay, because this is a great example that so many people will relate to around relationships. Is, and it's funny, our tarot readers um, on retreat say the number one thing people always talk about is love, of course, you know. Um, but when we're doing a vision board around identity, so our beliefs come from the identity that we hold about ourselves. So if we have the identity shift around, I'm going to meet a wonderful man. I'm in a loving, wonderful relationship with a man that really nourishes, nurtures and adores me. Then what does that look like in a vision board? What is that identity of that girl that has that belief and has that goal of meeting that man look like? And then you just could do this identity work around it. One of the things, and again, we go through this in the challenge that I did when I um, was doing that belief work around Trent was my list, um, was my um, manifestation meditation. And I would say it every day. So I love being in a, I'll try and remember it now, it was so long ago. I love being in a fun, committed um, and safe relationship with a kind, charismatic, um, loving, knowing, because I like that word knowing, it was like wise, but it was more than wise, knowing, um, sexy, um, I'll be making him blush if he's watching this, sexy, kind, charismatic, and balanced, that was the key word, I forgot to put that in before and uh, in my 30s and that, that was a, a real um, big word for me. I'd gone through this list with my coach Carolyn but balanced man and so I'd repeat this meditation every day um, when I was doing my manifestation and belief work and that's exactly what showed up. So it's uh, that identity work is really really interesting and yeah absolutely when you're after a goal you commit to it already having happened 
and that's what you program in. That's what you program into your body. I won't go all woo-woo on you now, but if anyone is interested in epigenetics, the work that Bruce Lipton does, the work that Joe Dispenza does, they show um, the telomeres in um, people's body and the DNA chains change when people believe that they're actually healthy. There's so much incredible work that's going on in the science field at the moment around epigenetics. So it is proven at even a medical um, level that people gaining the hearing all sorts of things are being cured and telomeres are actually changing in real time um, when they're doing this work so that's where we were enough for the moment <laughs> but it's backed in science which is what what appeals to me because I like anything that's backed in science um, and I love how spirituality and science is just now so hand in glove how are we going for time um, okay. Oh yeah, Anna, so Trent basically, yes. You and Julia have met Trent, so yeah, absolutely. Um, I think COVID is just blocking a lot of people's goals and manifesting dreams because we just can't see an end to this. Yeah, it's very difficult with uncertainty, absolutely. And that's what I was saying before, we have to be better than a linear line here we have to be above that because at the moment we're working against you know so many other forces that are at bay in terms of all of the media all of the fear all of the uncertainty so we need to bolster ourselves. we need to sharpen our resilience tools we need to dig into our well-being kit and go there and lean into it because if we don't or if we sabotage your efforts around this or if we sabotage the self-sabotage course then guess what happens? We even go more off track. We feel more guilty and we go blow it. Like when we blow a diet, well, I'm not going to start that thing again, at least for another few months because our pride's been dented and some voice in our head said, said see, I told you, you wouldn't be able to stay on track. So we have to throw everything we can at stuff. And the more we do, the easier it becomes because it becomes habitual. Um... Harriet, I know for me it's true because I'll always ask the question, how and when is this going to start if we've constantly got silly rules like be home at 10, don't mix with other people, don't go to work, don't fly. It seems nothing is possible at the moment except dreaming. Um, well, I know how that could work in an online sense, online dating. I'm sure you've got Tinder and Bumble. I heard Bumble's a new one. There's so many ways in which you can get to know someone platonically which is wonderful before you actually meet them. I think that could work incredibly well in your favor. I think the issue sometimes is things happening too fast without actually getting to know the person. So now look at it. What if you could flip that thinking and look at it in terms of this is the perfect time. And I love that whole belief. Like I have a deep belief that there's a silver lining in anything. So if you start that inquiry of going, okay, well, what is the silver lining? What is my reward for, you know, when things have gone a little bit rocky, things have gone off track this year. So how can I flip that to my advantage? You'll find when you start thinking about things through that lens, journaling, you know, you'll think of so many things. And the more you start thinking about things with that positive lens, that I can, you know, what you can do versus what you can't control, you can't control restrictions. No, you can't control the uncertainty. No. None of us can, but what you can control lies within here and it lies within here. And you're very creative, Harriet, you know. Apply that creativity to an area that you might be holding back on because of past experiences. They don't define you, remember. Remember all of the stuff I've been talking about with Abigail. It doesn't define you either, just like it didn't define me. And if I let it define me, I wouldn't have my loving family. And so... You know, that, that makes me sad when I think about that. And I don't want that for anyone. So take it from me, just cut those cords from the past and start believing that new possibilities are on the horizon and you are the captain of your ship. And you're going to sail it out of that harbour, throw off the bow lines and go on some mad, crazy, amazing adventure. But you just have to give yourself permission to do that voyage. No one can do that for you. No one's going to come and knock on the door on a, on a white horse and say, hey, come with me. You've got to make that happen. And you can, absolutely. Um, oh, and that is the end of the questions, ladies. 
So I'm just looking at the time here, ladies, as well. Are there any, because I've got another Q&A session with our meditation and breath coach trainers um, for the business module of our coaching in another 25 minutes that some of you ladies are going to be on too, which is very exciting. I ran one this morning too, which was great. But are there any other questions, ladies? I've got a couple more minutes left before I sign off. Let me know if there's anything else and if that made sense around um, the tool that we spoke about. I'd love to hear from you if there is anything else. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, just carry on as, as much as you can. Just make sure you're, you're doing that sort of two to three minutes a day. Consistency is really key here, and you're going to get so much out of this month. And don't worry what lies ahead. Just trust me that we're just taking little bite-sized chunks every day and the compound effect of that is going to be this massive, beautiful change around some of those limiting beliefs that are no longer going to be there at the end of the month and some incredibly healthy ones that are going to be planted and blooming in their place, ready to set you up for a dazzling, beautiful 2021. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, great, Victoria. I'm so pleased that helped answer that. Um, oh, good, Harriet. You managed to catch half of it today. Perfect. I got the time wrong, Anna. Okay. Loved your insights. Thanks so much, Abigail. Oh, wonderful. You are welcome. Anne-Marie, yes, thank you. Good, good. Bite-sized chunk sounds perfect to me right now. Oh, good, Anna. I know you're jumping quite a lot at the moment. Absolutely. Well, let's have a look. In this 21 challenge, like to stop this is Julie I'd like to stop procrastinating Do you have a recommendation for baby steps yesterday I imagined that I'd be actively trying to stop procrastinating every time I realize it, but I'm afraid that it might be too much and that I'll feel unable and then lose my motivation do you know what I mean and can you help me there yes I can do you mean Julia with regards to this challenge or do you mean um, generally um, with work or can you give me a little bit more context around that because that is a very very common um, form of self-sabotage so you're not alone in that at all um, if you can give me a little bit more context I can help answer that for you mm -hmm. Deborah thank you Janine and all the ladies too I'll be listening to this Q&A again it's given me more insight and understanding self-sabotage Brilliant. I'm so pleased, Deborah, and well done showing up for this and love seeing you taking part in the challenges too. Good on you. I know you've had a big move back to New Zealand from Melbourne and a lot of changes happened. When changes happen, it's really difficult to just recalibrate. So I'm really glad you're, you're following along. Um, Julie, I'll just wait another minute to see if I hear back on this one or maybe just after you can give me a little bit more detail. But recommendation for baby steps do you mean if, if it's in terms of this challenge if it's baby steps in terms of this challenge it's just doing the um, exercises every day so each day you'll see that there's an exercise that's going to take you deeper and deeper into self-sabotage we start really light because we don't want ladies to get overwhelmed the most important thing is just making sure you've got the right goal in place so as I mentioned earlier you want to get to the goal that's behind the goal that's behind the goal, the goal that really matters, the goal that when you look back on the year, you can say, oh my God, I did it. I did it. I mastered that. I finally got out of my own way so I could achieve something that was so important to myself. So that's what we're working through, just one goal, and we're just doing these little baby steps um, through that. The way I do baby steps as I look at continuum, here's where I want to go, here are some of the milestones I need to get through. Because often what happens when we're traveling in this linear kind of way towards a goal is we forget where we've been and we also forget what the steps are in terms of where we get to. So we get somewhere here and we're like, oh my God, the mountain seems so far away, oh my goodness. If we've got it mapped out in terms of, okay, this is my goal and here's like say five set points that I need to get to, then we can be like, okay, no, keep your head down. You just need to get between three and four. Okay, now I'm at four. Now I'm on the last stretch. I just need to get from four to five. And hey, I'm proud of myself because I've got from one to four already. You know, you can look back. So I would say just map out those goals, whatever they might be, and just chunk them down. 
chunk them down into just actionable, easy kind of steps. I love, there's this image that I really love and it's two ladders leaning against a wall. One's got loads of little steps and a happy guy standing at the top looking down at this little guy that's got, you know, like six steps. So this guy might have 30 steps and he's made it all the way up to top. And then there's this little guy and he's got the same height ladder but there's only about seven steps. And so it's impossible for him to get here and he's kind of hanging off one step sort of looking really, you know, like upset and stressed and, you know, anxious. And his mate's at the top. He's got more steps, but he's got there with ease and confidence and happiness. And, you know, it was a cruisy route for him. So always chunk stuff down. I think it's our rumble. It's our, like, um, the dynamic tension between achievement and, you know, ease that we always have to wrestle with. And, you know, we know this when we have a to-do list. What am I going to do today? And instead of writing three things, who here writes 10? You know, who here writes 10? If we do that, we're going to get to the end of the day and go, oh, I don't really feel like I achieved. So, oh my gosh, I'll just try and stay, get these other things done. And then we try and do that. And, you know, then everything else goes out of the window. It's not as much fun. So just break things down into small steps. Think about what those milestones are and then divide it in half, say you've got five steps, do 10 then. And then, you know, understand what those milestones are at each, at each set point, and then you'll be able to feel like you've achieved, and you also won't feel overwhelmed, and you won't feel frustrated, and you won't feel a lack of achievement. The most important thing is remembering how far you've come, and that you only have to go from here to here next. And then you're not focusing on the big picture, because without it, it's like, oh my god, that mountain's still so far away. Ah. Oh. Does that answer your question? I hope that makes sense. Uh, hi Victoria, how are you? Um, sounds good. I'll also like Trent's morning ritual as baby steps towards major goals. Absolutely. Baby steps for this challenge, which I'll continue in life in general. Wonderful. All right, ladies, I'm going to love you and leave you there and get ready for my call that is starting in about 20 minutes with many of you ladies talking about business and the wellness area and the wellness arena. I'm so excited about that. Um, you gave me an idea. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, good. I was, afraid, I was afraid that I'll love meditation if I have to stop procrastinating several times a day. If I'm honest to myself, I guess I'll find several procrastinating situations per day my goal identity one procrastination per day and stop it love it identify one procrastinate love it love it that is great Julia so achievable so easy and you're shining the light on the things that are holding you back I love that well done awesome work ladies so lovely talking to you as always I love our chats I um, hope that's helped we're going to do another Q&A. Now, I need to know from you ladies, please let me know um, what dates suit, either next weekend, Saturday or Sunday, because I know the following one's holidays, so it might not be easy for you, but I was thinking next week on either Saturday or Sunday, so please drop in the comments which one you'd prefer, um, if that's available to you. And I look forward to seeing all of your beautiful progress and the challenges um, as we go and continue to keep helping out one another on those challenges too. Keep up the vulnerability, keep up the courage. You guys are doing so well. Well done. I'll speak to you soon. Have a beautiful weekend, ladies. Bye for now.